Hello everyone, and are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm here with uh, another episode of the, the Grind Never Ends, which I remembered the name of the episode after three episodes. It had been so long between one and two that I had uh, completely forgotten what they are. And for today's episode, you can see going on in the background as I talk, it's me doing a little bit of Lotto cleanup. I have to... Well, Lotto is done now. Uh, Tamlin Cup is completely done, and I don't know how everyone else likes to do it, but typically what I do is that I grind it like crazy, and then I save all of it for the end. I usually open about 10 boxes, which I think is enough to get all the grand prizes, 10, 11, 12. It kind of depends on if I need a unit that needs to just be quickly leveled up a little bit. Um, and then from that point on, I start to do the process of cleaning up. The reason I used to do it in the middle of um, of doing it back when I was a newer player, uh, just because it was a good way. I had units to actually level up, but now I save it for the end. So <laughs> that's it. This is the the post lotto cleanup. If you've not watched one of these before, it's typically just a way for me to sit back, relax as the grind goes on in the background, and I can talk to you guys for a bit. I'm gonna try and make this one a little bit longer, just because. I did get some feedback from some other people who said like, hey, if you can make these just a little bit longer, that'd, that'd be good. I'd listen to this while I'm grinding. So you can see that as that is a nice, cool, chill way to do it as I talk through everything that's been going on. So I guess we can start with Fago just because we're at the end of it. Uh, this process that I did here, it should this, I, I think in theory, the video should be 40 to an hour long. I know the actual process of me going through everything took about an hour, and that was me cleaning up the boxes, taking the silver three-star EXP, converting those into mana prisms, and then using the four EXP that I had to fully level up the my box that still needed leveling to max level, and then using the rest of it to get a buki some level increase. There's currently a three times EXP going on for both servant and craft essence. So it's a good time to kind of like, um, you know, get your stuff up and running. <laughs> uh, so I did that, and uh, Ibuki had been level 104 for, I think, a good bit here. I'm going to try and get her to level 120. I actually don't know if I have enough metal. She is MP5, but I forget if I use the... I don't think I opened the other to append. So I think I should have enough to be able to get to a level 100... Uh, 20 and have a single append open and then maybe oh man I need that last copy if I want to go the full three append well it's even more annoying because not only do I need that I also need to get the bond up which thanks to the most recent uh lotto that we just had she's around bond eight so she's not that far off I think with everything included you have to get to like bond 12 i believe it is if you want all three of them open but i'm good with having level 120 and a single append for now and then maybe on gssr this year i kind of go on the berserker route but i don't know i still have to do that i have to do that video where i look at it and it's one of the things i have planned but i have a current video currently cooking up that i need to do it's the one i do usually around this time of year um but I've been very busy with work randomly, so I couldn't get it done the way I wanted to. But yeah, the, the grind this year wasn't uh, too bad. Challenge quests were pretty alright too. Me and my brother did a good amount of videos. It was a fun time recording those. And a lot of people actually watched them, which I, I was surprised. <laughs> Who knew? That if you record videos of gameplay of Fago, maybe people will show up to them. But I, I was surprised by it just because... Um, it's not like they're, it's the most greatest gameplay. Every time I see a gameplay video with Fago, uh, it's usually someone cracking some kind of team to show off and be like, here. And I don't think I can really compete in that kind of capacity. I have the units I like to use, and I do like to come up with team builds from here to time, but usually more around grinding, and the challenge quest stuff has never been my forte. But, you know, being there with my brother, doing our little silly way of... <laughs> challenging these fights which are one shot go kind of round table draft picking i pick one you pick one i pick one you pick one letting him have whatever support unit he wants and just kind of rolling with it i think makes for i guess decently fun enough videos but in my head i'm like does anyone actually want that kind of stuff though i imagine it's cut but i think it's probably closer the the way i have to think about it probably because i have a little bit of a 
pessimistic viewpoint on a lot of these things is that I have to look at it similar to the way I look at Yu-Gi-Oh videos because I watch a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh content mostly thanks to Master Duel but I do occasionally see people playing other kind of stuff here and there and there are definitely creators that I f that I watch and follow who are maybe not the greatest at the actual gameplay and there are people who I also follow for that level of gameplay um but I never expect the two to be like, I never expect amazing gameplay from the guy who I'm there to be entertained compared to the one that I'm there to be there because they're like, oh yeah, they're a pro at this and they know a lot. And I'm like, oh man, I'm looking at their skill and I think that's amazing to watch. It's like two different ways of seeing it. And I guess I have to kind of think about that way of Fago that maybe there is a place out there for people who just want to have fun and not take it all that serious. But you know, these are just my thoughts here. It's a little bit weird just because I'm so disconnected from a lot of the larger community stuff. Um, it's not that I have anything against them. <laughs> I have to be very careful with what I say. It's just because I, I came from the Dokkan side of things. So I don't really have any, <laughs> like, leeway. The closest I have is Gutsu, who posts uh, news stuff on Twitter. That, that's about the closest I get to anyone. Shoutouts to Gutsu. But for the most part, th yeah, that's basically it. I'm a, I'm a man on my own doing stuff and looking at stuff and being like, alright, let's kind of get uh, this stuff moving around and see what I can do. Think of a video. Here we go. And then never actually looking at the larger sense of it. That's not the correct way of doing it, by the way. I should mention this. It would be smarter for me to watch the others and see what they're doing and see how they handle things. But, uh, I don't do that. <laughs> for what reason? Uh, not a good one. But if, <laughs> if you're actually interested in building yourself up, it's better to start doing things like that. But, yeah, for the most part, I don't. Um, if they ever did, if they communicate towards me, then I will gladly say like, oh, hey, hello, I'm, I'm over here just doing my own thing. But if you're from the other side and you come and say like, hey, Wokey, how you doing? Are you interested in something? Then I'd be like, yeah, of course. And then at that point, like you notice it because in 13 Nights of Halloween, all the people I <laughs> asked to join are like Dokkan creators. They come from Shonen Jump or they're my own friends. <laughs> um... The only one that ever came from a different kind of community was uh, Quite, who I can never pronounce his name right just because I think it's French. Uh, he's told me how to say it before, but I, I can never get it right. Um, who came from the Jigalia side, and that was him specifically coming to me and saying like, Hey, Wokey, I'm a fan. Can you do this where we talk about specifically Jigalia stuff? And I'm always just like, oh yeah, I would love to do that. And that was my first taste of hearing other Dragalia content creators, because up until that point, it's not like I was seeking them out. The specific things that I'm watching are not the specific things I guess I play. I don't know, it's, it's weird. But I, I feel like I've always been weird with certain aspects of that stuff. No, I end up watching a lot of other stuff. And, um, like I said, like a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh stuff, so I see a lot of it on that side. Which is funny, because I think for the most part, a lot of people, um, <laughs> typically watch other creators who do their own stuff in their own game. Uh, so I should probably get on that and stop being lazy. There have, I, I do, I have seen other videos, obviously, because whenever I talk about a specific unit, someone will come in and say, like, hey man, let me show you this. And it's from another YouTuber, and I'm like, oh my god, I, I see it, and I'm like, oh my god, that's that's great, this is a fantastic video. And then I never think about it afterwards, but it's probably also because I mainly keep a track on the YouTube home, and my algorithm long time ago died to VTuber stuff, so if it's not there, then unfortunately it just doesn't pop up. It is what it is, it's like half Yu-Gi-Oh, half that. Uh, well, live twin Sunny. Funny enough, even though I do see it a, a decent amount, mainly from the Hollow Life side, I never have actually played the uh, VTuber archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh. The Life Twins, not my style. It was more Memento and stuff like that. But anyway, <laughs> back. I so hard transitioned out of Fago there. But let me think about some more other stuff from this lotto. The lotto grand ended up being all right. The how hard I went into it was maybe over, maybe close to 120 boxes or so. 
which is not bad. I think someone most recently asked, asked me on my Discord, which I do have a Discord, which maybe I should link down below if you're interested to join. It's based off of the old Dragalia one, which it's just Trash Alliance again. If you want to join the Trash Alliance, feel free to. It's not really a dedicated hub to Fago. It's more just like any people hanging out, saying stuff. It'd probably be better if I started a new one, but I like Trash Alliance so much as is, and I don't think I have it in me to make a new one. And even then, I'd probably have to ask my friend Lerp to help me with that. Because so many of the stuff that he built... Because I didn't make the Discord myself. I asked him for help. And he said, yeah, sure. And because he's interested in making that kind of stuff. And I think he might be busy nowadays with a lot of the stuff he does. So I don't know if he can help me make another one. But So for the most part, you can go over to the Trash Alliance. It's a great way if you want to get a hold of me. And be like, hey, Wokey, what are you doing right now? I'm like, I don't know. Playing some Dragon Quest. How's it going? But anyway, someone's asked me, he's like, how much is a good amount of lotto boxes to go for? And in my head, I'm like, well, the right answer is any that you are comfortable with getting. If you could get around 20 and you're satisfied and you're happy with that, then you got 20. It's perfectly fine. You couldn't grind more. You couldn't do this. You couldn't do that. 20 is perfectly fine. At minimum, you should be able to, you should try and get all the grand prizes and then anything after that it's like extra it's like you ordered a um you're at an all-you-can-eat buffet right and you get the stuff that you like first you get the pizza you get the fries you get the chicken the fried chicken you get some sushi this may be revealing a little bit too about well, too much about myself but the point is you get the stuff right because you're entering into an all-you-can-eat buffet, and you eat that, and you're like, this is great, this is what I came here for, and then anything that comes after that meal, that's when you start going, you know what, I could use a little bit of this um, weird stuff, weird sushi that they got, I just got a California roll, but you know what, this other type of thing looks pretty good, or like a Korean barbecue, right, where you order Korean barbecue, you get the meats, and then you get the meats that you are always your go-to and you're like, okay, you know what? Second go around, let's try for some of the weirder meats. Let's go for this. Let me ask for this. And then you eat that and you're like, oh, okay, all right. One more go around. And you keep going around until you're full. Because at a certain point, even though you know that you've paid a lot of money <laughs> to get the Korean barbecue or the all-you-can-eat buffet, and you know it's unlimited until they kick you out of the place, at some point, you do reach a limit, and when you reach that limit of yourself, you it's perfectly okay to be like, all right, I'm done. Um, I'm good. I'm out of here. And some people have the huge appetite. They're the people who can go into a buffet and be like, oh, yeah, man, keep on filling my shit up, brother. I'll take these wedges. I'll take this. What is this? Gefilte fish? I'll eat some gefilte fish. This is the weirdest all-you-can-eat buffet that I've ever been to. The one I'm describing here. This ice cream cone filled with two, three different types of ice cream. I will take that. Put some gummy bears on top of it. I'll mid-maxing the shit out of this all-you-can-eat buffet. There's nothing wrong with being someone who's going, I'm going to the all-you-can-eat buffet. I'm getting the big things. And then I'm getting a little bit extra. You know what? Maybe some watermelon, some cantaloupe from the side, a banana. You know, and I feel pretty good about myself right now. And that's perfectly okay. I support you in your banana lifestyle. <laughs> Man who goes to the all-you-can-eat buffet and has a water, a slice of watermelon and is like, damn, this is good. Point is, yeah, as long as you feel satisfied by the end of it, you don't have to feel yourself that you have to do something, right? It's good to take advantage of it while it's there, but does, does that mean you have to go out of your way from your scheduling to go do it yourself? No. No one's, uh, no one, like, I don't expect people to be like, okay, you need to grind 100 if you want to be serious about this shit. No. Grind what you need, grind what you can, and then if you're, if you don't want to do it anymore, then don't do it. You can stop eating. It's perfectly fine. Um, but it is something of a new player to be like, okay, but when, how do I know? And it can be a little bit tough for some newer players just because they're like, a lot of the people who have been around a lot of people who have been to very multiple <laughs> to multiple all-you-can-eat buffets we know that this is the best time to be eating 
and so we eat and we gorge ourselves we save ourselves our apples are our appetite that we made sure not to eat for the entire day because we knew we were about to fuck it up as soon as we got there we were able to use the apples and yeah they have big numbers and you can look at those numbers and you can be intimidating it's like oh my god this guy got 200 boxes and i'm over here with like 17 is that enough and it's like of course it's enough if you feel it's enough it's enough and if you are starting out and you're going through it and you get the boxes and you're like that was great maybe now i'm better prepared now for when this comes around again and you can have that experience again where you can go a little bit further it's not there's no need for you to go from zero to 100 it's okay to take your time and be comfortable with what you're doing and again these are gotcha games they're meant to be paid played mobile they're not meant to be played. They're not to be made to have MMO-like dedication to them. That's how you lose your mind. That's how you um, enter year 10 of Dokkan going like, there's no content in this. And it's like, because you fucking did it all, man. It's, it's because this game was not made to be like, I'm going to do multiple runs. No, it was made to be like, I'm doing this every once in a while. When I have time to pop open the game, play a little put it down it was never made to do the further things the only thing i'll say for Fago in terms of it it wants you to keep going is the story the story is the one point where i will concede and say okay for the story these stories are fucking long they want you to go through them all and like experience them so then it's okay for everything to be kind of go there but anyway i digress so yeah if you're a newer player don't feel don't feel too bad about it as long as you were able to get the, all the grand prizes and you were able to grind yourself just a little bit nothing wrong you did perfectly well in my eyes um if you want to see for yourself what you could do better then you you know you probably know so there you go and yeah and let me see what am i what am i gonna do next i feel like now it's a full-on prepare for cuckoo and tez season um i don't think think i'll be able to get kotomine slash rasputin i will go for them because it's anniversary time and i will summon for an anniversary unit but i don't believe i will get him um and so if i get him then then i guess i'll try and unlock his stuff but for the most part i don't think i'll get him so i can't prepare him forward tez i badly want only at a single mp copy so i should prepare for him just in case the problem is, is that he uses new materials, so I can't grant the new material that much, but I can make sure that the other stuff is ready for him. And then for Cuckoo, it's full-on hands-on deck. The thing I'm still unaware of, I really wish Tez goes as easy as possible. Because Cuckoo is the one I want to try and get MP5, and if I miss it this time, it might change around the schedule a bit, and I might have to start saving for that next time to get her... to guarantee another copy, basically to get you another shot at it um thankfully i'm i'm currently at almost a thousand sync quartz and then i have to grind more a lot of the story stuff that i not story stuff a lot of the um main quests that i still have left over a lot of the we're gonna get 30 quartz from christmas i mean we'll get other stuff here and there that'll be help me out to get to the goal of 2000 that i want but the problem and it's always been the problem is tez because if tez does me wrong oh my god it's devastating <laughs> absolutely it's devastating because i have to then go all the way to um pity and if i hit pity with tez that's a huge fucking chunk of saint quartz just gone and I and basically, if it hits, if it hits pity with Tez, there's just like no shot. And if you're wondering why are you going for Tez, because he's the brother of Quetz. End story. Don't come at me. Even though she hates her brother, <laughs> that's still family. I still accept him as part of it. Plus, Japan loves Tez, and Tez is the closest I'll ever get to a for them potentially humoring Quetzalcoatl Summer, or at the very least, Cuckoo Summer, because. There's no, uh, with with them double dipping on BB, I'm now afraid that they're now going to start double dipping on, now we're going to get 5 star Ishtar, now that we have Summer Erish, we're going to get Ishtar back, we're going to get another Summer Saber, we're going to get another Summer Tomomo, even though we have 
other Tomomo that need a summer outfit, they're gonna give it specifically to the OG for some reason. Um, I don't know, that opens a, a, a gate that I really wish they hadn't opened, and I wish that BB had been Passion Lip instead. I don't know. I don't know. Tell me how you feel about this, but as someone who, ha who specifically loves a character who had an event that went so badly that a lot of people think it's because of copyright issues. No, it's not because of copyright issues. It's because Japan does not like Quetzalcoatl all that much. Um, that they <laughs> never gave her a rerun. Um, and to be fair to them, I guess in the new year we do have a Samba Quetz that will be coming back. But it doesn't change the fact that those fuckers, when it came time to rerun a Christmas event, they skipped her over and gave it to Santa Carna, who also never got a rerun. And they just straight up ignored my girl. So I don't have high hopes for them for them to actually legitimately acknowledge her. If they were going to do it, they were going to do it back when um, she was a part of Summer 2, where the story was when she saved us from the Bull of Heaven. That would have been the time to release Summer Quetz, either that year or next year, and they never did it. So, but with the new versions of them, I maybe have a little bit more shot. They did give the the city her own um, uh, Teopoluk, I believe is one of the names she goes by. She did get a summer unit, so maybe maybe this year, knock on wood. Maybe not this year, maybe next year on JP. We will actually get the summer event that I've always wanted, which is one based off of them giving it to the others just because of how popular tez is in japan and it took him a while to kind of get around to the idea of a quetzalcoatl but i mean at least it's her brother i can't fault him too much so yeah that's the one of the reasons why i want this plus he's also a very good assassin like insane um i feel like he doesn't get mentioned all that much for his kit but to begin again to be fair Go back to what I said earlier. It's not like I'm following a, a bunch of YouTubers to kind of listen to them. Speaking of, I want to hear your opinion. If you if you made it this far, first of all, shout outs. We're at the check mark. We're at, we're at the point where I say like, hey, if you made it this far, get, tell me about this. They recently gave a buff to Super Bunyan, and I felt that it was nice of them as a gesture to give her a buff, but it doesn't actually fix a lot of the issues I have with her which is based around her current kit and how it works and her mechanic that needs just a little bit more help. I didn't get an additional help. What I got was an MP that is slightly stronger, that still applies defense after the damage is applied, and now gives 20 crit stars for the next turn. Not, not, not amazing in my view, especially compared to some, the amazing buff that Mel just got. Melt they gave literally the world to with her giving her the ability to apply her thing first before she dealt damage, which makes her amazing, beautiful, love it. I don't have an, an issue with Melt getting that. What I'm asking is, is that I felt like they could have done a little bit better by Super Bunyan. And someone again on my Discord pointed out, like, why are some people saying, like, they didn't need to buff Bunyan? She was too good already to start. And I'm like, who the fuck said that? Show, <laughs> show me where they said that and there were some jp people who were saying like this makes her on par with kentoki now and i just didn't see it. let me see if i can so anytime i have i want to catch of like an idea of what what people on jp have to say and by people i mean one specific group because i have to assume it's like us, right? Where you'll have some people have a very specific opinion and you ask them like, oh, where'd you, why do you feel that way? And then they tell you, well, because it said so on Game Press. I don't actually have the unit, but I read what they had to say on Game Press. So I assume that it's similar in Japan where some people in Japan have a preset notions of an idea of a unit and it's simply because that's what they say on, um, uh, that's what they say on App Media. So on App Media, <laughs> Originally, her ranking was A, and they have updated Super Bunyan to be S rank, uh, meaning she is some of the top, one of the top units in the entire game. If you want an idea of how they ranked some of the other alter egos, Melt got an A, Kiara has an A, Okita Alter, Setonia, Protea have a B, Domin has an S, 
Bazette has an A, Rasputin has an A, Tiamat A plus, the the twins from the previous um uh fates not fate series a type moon series the asumi and the shoto hippie shika they have an a plus kazura drop got an a super bunion s rank and this is maybe the most positive i've ever seen anyone be towards super bunion <laughs> before this it was a and then they've updated it to b and s and i believe their reasoning is let me see super bunion strengths um the third Ascension Noble Phantasm performance is extremely short, which is a, an extreme positive. A single target Noble Phantasm attack whose attacks increase with the number of likes when hit, like is granted. Gives B buff and overcharge increase to allies, also allows for support of allies firepower. And the only weakness they have ever given her is highly dependent on Noble Phantasm level, which I feel like, does that mean... <laughs> Is it a situation where it's like they view her the same as uh, Type Moon? No, not Type Moon. What is, what is R Type Earth? Where they're like, oh yeah, she's R Type Earth has an A plus. They do not view Archetype Earth on the same level of Super Bunyan. Super Bunyan is an S. That is how they currently see it. I'm mean, you're right. I'm gonna be getting a little bit in sense about this, but I just want to understand. I want to understand to a certain level because I felt like for the most part everyone was in agreement that Super Bunyan, either you loved her, which is me, and you thought that she needed to be a little bit better, or you hate her and you never wanted to see her again. <laughs> Those are the two videos I ever saw. I did not know there was an entire faction of people who believed actually Super Bunyan is fucking insane. And it's because of her th uh, her third noble phantasm is the fastest for grinding. Therefore, if you have her at high NP levels, she makes it extremely fast to farm. Which, to be fair, the only way for me to personally test that is for me to get more NP copies of Super Bunyan. And I don't <laughs> I don't know if I could do. It. I don't think I'm strong enough to get it. But yeah, so what what do you feel about that? Feel free to tell me about that. I would... It made me feel like, okay, maybe I need to try again with Super Bunyan, because I mine is like level 100, and I she's obviously NP level 1. So maybe it really is a case of like, maybe if she has higher NP levels. Because if you actually think about it in terms of a logical way, yes. Her having extremely fast um, Noble Phantasm would mean that if you could kill the unit that you were fighting then the fight would end very quick and that would be amazing for grinding. How often does that happen though? <laughs> Can anyone tell me? And if you want to look, again, I don't want to specifically call anyone out for their opinions on it, but I feel like S rank for Bunyan is being really, really, um, if you want to know the other people who are in S rank with Super Bunyan, it's Ptolemaeus, it's Gilgamesh, it's Tezalopikia, it's Kintoki, Swimsuit Castoria, Domin, Swimsuit BB, the original, uh, Seal, and Koyan Skaya of Darkness, I believe. Let me see. It says Dark Koyan, so I can only assume. Uh, yes, okay, it's a Dark Koyan. And they consider her better. She's ranked higher than Melusain, Merlin, which, to be fair, if you um, go to the high difficulty support, Merlin is on the same tier. But if you just look at the generic rank up, Merlin is an A+. Um, Raiko, Summer Musashi, Swimsuit Scotty, um, Gene Alter, <laughs> Tiamat, Archetype Earth, Cuckoo, uh, Artoria, um, Bride Nero... There's like an entire list here. They also have Arthur and A, but I actually don't know how good that, that buff is. Um, Super Orion. All the Tutan Common, they say she completely doesn't... I'm, I'm putting words into their mouth. But they say he's A, she's S. Uh, better than Enkidu. Better than Queen Maeve. Better than Ivan the Terrible. Be fair, not a lot of people are hyping up Ivan, even though I think Ivan is pretty good. Um... Another unit on here who I said I think needs a little bit help, uh, Nemo, they have at A, but I think he most recently got a buff, so I actually don't know that much. So I need to do a little bit more into that. Um, Senno Riccio, not as good as Super Bunyan. 
This is what this is what they have declared. Put on here. S Space Ishtar, Swimsuit Karna, all lower rank. Melt, like I said, is already an A. Rasputin A, BB Dubai A, Voyager A, Van Gogh A. <laughs> I'm going to stop looking at this just because I'm just going to go crazier. But you get what I'm saying here. So I want to know, what are your specific feelings on it? Because um, my feeling is, is that maybe, let me see. Maybe if I type into YouTube Super Bunyan or put it put into Google, see what other people are saying. See if there's some guy hyped up saying like, yo, let's do it. Let me see. Type it in now, Super Bunyan. Uh, fastest farmer in the West, which to be fair, looking at these numbers from Plushy Mistress on this specific tab, this looks very high to me. This could be good. Uh, in terms of the other one, I don't think anyone else has done it yet. But one person out here, one day ago, MP upgraded a single star. I guess I can just look at this video real quick. Make sure that, okay. All right, let me see what, how she looks in action here. I'm going to li live look at this one. Please go watch Plushy Mistress's video if you want to see it. They're fighting um, the Kiara from the CCC event. Okay, double Koyan. I should have looked to see what MP it was. It's too late now. I'll assume... Okay, Merlin comes in. Okay, okay we're, we're seeing the buffs here. 400,000. Doing it up big. Regular attack. All right. Yeah, that kills. But that's I expect anyone that's going double Koyan and a Merlin to be able to kill with Buster Crits. Nothing too shocking here. She does her moves. Goes forward a little bit. All right. Time for the Bunyan NP. Bunyan has two attacks in her, so that means that she has a little bit of likes on her. I think, I don't know if she took any damage on that. I didn't pay attention. Uh, 500,000 on a, I found an MP, but it was like a three second MP. After being buffed by three dudes. I don't know, that's respectable damage for sure. Hmm. And then they get the 20 crits, and now they have like 57 crits, which is not bad. And let me see. Are they going to be able to kill? I'm going to assume that they would not have uploaded this video unless they killed. So, <laughs> let, let's see. Yeah, no, they're going to kill with this. Easy. They get one more hit in here just to get her a little bit more extra attack. And let's see right here. 900,000. And yeah, that's a, that's a victory on that part. I mean, that looks really good, but that can look good in any video. So I don't know. Maybe it requires further research on my part to look into. This is the problem with not having the JP version of the game, is that a lot of it is me just kind of trusting on what a lot of people who play the JP version of the game have to say. And currently, it's hard for me to imagine a scenario where Super Bunyan is amazing based off of stats. If I don't know. Um, but she always has had, has had a very weird kit. Maybe I've been looking at her wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Now maybe I'm gaslighting myself. Let me go back. I, maybe I need to do another evaluation, another test. Further testing is required after hearing my long rant of me with my thought process looking at stuff. Maybe it's time for me to check it out again. And if you're ever curious about how my thought process goes with Udits, that's how it kind of shakes out <laughs> a lot of the time. It's me hard believing in something until someone says otherwise. And then I go, that's insane. That's crazy. That's crazy. Let me look this up. Let me see. Okay. All right. Hmm. Interesting. Let me test this myself. Do I still feel the same way? And then we go through it. And that's how I would. And I've been wrong in the past. I'm now, I will be the first to tell you there's plenty of times when I've been wrong about something. And I've always, I feel like, been pretty good at saying when I've been wrong and saying I was wrong and saying I was sorry to this unit and I stopped my shit talking. And I've always made it very clear whenever I've said specifically in the past, I thought a unit was bad and then someone proved me wrong. And I said, all right, I don't think that anymore. 
I my views have changed. I'm a changed man. <sighs> but man, all right. That's that's further investigation stuff for me. <laughs> if you see a video of me releasing a video of Bunyan saying, "Was I too mean to Bunyan?" You'll see it soon. I would love for it for it to be good. I love Bunyan. I love Bunyan. I love Super Bunyan. Um, I love all the learning with manga characters. Um, so I would love a scenario where maybe it really is a case of just like maybe the issue has always been, "Hey, do you want her to be better? Just give her more MP copies." And I feel like that's just uh, such a bummer ass way to talk about a unit. Like I hate, I hated all the time I was talking about Archetyper. If I hate, I hate bringing her up only because I have to be the bearer of bad news and say she needs more than one NP copy for the most part. And for a lot of fights as they get harder, especially now that I've actually had to deal with a lot of the harder events that we've had so far, I'm like, yo, it'd be a good idea to get her NP five. Uh, if you want if you want to do the full rotation with just her uh you're probably gonna need mp5 and i i don't know i'd like units at mp1 to be able to do everything that something an mp5er would be able to do and the only thing that an mp5er would does is just has way more damage and that's it like a uh, like a summer Buki should still be able to loop perfectly at mp level one and one at five just does it better and does more damage but for the most part i don't want it to be a case of just like oh yeah she can't loop at mp level one but if you get more mp copies in her she can i don't like that kind of stuff i don't like that kind of design i think it's um i don't know i don't think it's a very good design for the most part it feels greedy especially in a game where i feel like for the most part mp copies don't super matter a lot of the time it's weird when it's spe for specific units it really does matter but i don't know maybe i'm thinking about this all wrong maybe i'm wrong what is life anymore man i don't know what was i talking about oh yeah <laughs> forgot so i'm, I'm excited for the dance <laughs> and <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> um, I'll probably have to look at my supply and see how much I need, and maybe the next grind and talk, not grind and talk, um, grind never ends, we'll be focused on trying to grind up some of their stuff. I'm also going to probably do a different kind of like look of it, of me trying to just record off screen my natural AP. Because I remember someone saying like, um, Hey man, you should just use your nat natural AP. I think it was way back in the first one. I was like, I, I have like over two. I, at the time, I had like over 300 golden apples. I have 400 silver apples. I had around maybe 200 bronze apples. And now I have, uh, in terms of copper apples, I have somewhere in the 200s. And you are telling me that I need to save stamina. Okay. I agree for the most part that you should have a pretty good stamina adjustment, but you should look at my reserves before to mentioning to me like, hey man, maybe save it. I think I've saved enough and I've earned the right to grind just a little bit more. Maybe I'm just being greedy. Who knows? Um, so yeah, that, that's basically it for for go, for for go stuff. Um, looking forward to a lot of that doing a lot of video prep stuff gonna looks like it's thing gonna be a little bit it's looking like it's gonna be a little bit slow for the foreseeable week so maybe i can finally get a lot of the stuff that i've been planning to do and get it done finally finishing writing up what i need finish looking up and researching what i need to do um and then recording it and releasing it hopefully before thanksgiving um and before the end of december would be ideal um and then also, I don't know, man, I have some time for myself as well. Play some of the games that I've been meaning to, I've been saving for the most part. Finish off Dragon Quest HD, try and, final, try and finish Final Fantasy 16, uh, go back and play some of the other games that I've been playing as well. There's part of me that also feels like I'll probably have bought it by the time you've heard this, probably you're just buying Bellatro as well. I've been avoiding playing it just because I love card games. And every single card game player that I know who has played Bellatro basically fell into a rabbit hole. And was like, yeah man, this game's good. 
So I've, I've been avoiding it for that specific reason, but I think with all the latest discourse of dumb people saying, like, actually, my gooning game should be number one, Stellar Blade, uh, which I feel very, very sorry for the people who legitimately like that game for the gameplay and for the actual world characters, because they have, like, the worst hype men in the world. It's like... <laughs> It's like being really into something and you and you believe in its combat and you believe in its characters You believe in all this and you believe that it deserves recognition Which I think is perfectly fair and then the good the dude who agrees with you. Yeah, check out this How could this not be on there? And it's just a picture of someone's ass <laughs> It's it's the DLC where they're like, oh, yeah, if the camera If you try and look up the skirt she kicks you away. This is what they're missing out on <laughs> It's like, oh, dude, why am I on the same fucking team as you? I agree, but you're showing it off in the stupidest way possible. So I feel very sorry for them. Um, but I have to try out some of the other ones that I believe were nominated on the Game Awards, I think. Actually, I, I other than Balatra, who, who else was actually nominated? I don't remember. Um, let me see. I ha oh, man. Just to do a quick... Take a quick look at these images. Jeff Keighley. Astrobot seemed a lot of fun. Actually, we have Astrobot. I should play that as well. My brother bought it and he looked really fun when he played it. He also is saying right now that it's good, if you can hear him. Uh, Black Myth from Wukong, I don't have any interest. Um, Black King, Black Myth Wukong? Yeah. I, I'll agree that it does look good, but I don't think it's my kind of game. Uh, yeah, that, that's the thing. I'm, I'm not, like, debating saying it shouldn't be on here. I'm just saying specifically it doesn't seem like my jam, um, personally. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I still need to get through that first game. And I'm, I also have made that big-ass plan of mine, which is playing through every single Final Fantasy game. And I was streaming Final Fantasy VII, and I promised Zen I would get back to it at some point. So I have to go for that. Metaphor, uh, Refantasio, I haven't played yet. Um, I didn't buy it yet, because I think it came out the same time as Sparking Zero? Yes, it came out the same time as Sparking Zero. Um, I chose Sparking Zero, uh, which is a very fun game. A, very, a fantastic, wonderful 7 out of 10 experience that I loved uh, immensely when I played it. Um, and I was happy with what I got. Um, but at some point I, I, I knew that I had a lot of JRPGs to kind of go through and I'm like, that's one of them where I have, like, I have to go back in there. Uh, Final Fantasy said, I already said it. And yeah, Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree. I have to actually still go back and beat that final boss now that they made it beatable, um, for regular people. <laughs> When I when my friend Neo, who loves Elden uh, Elden Ring from Soft in general, if when he when even he was saying like I think this fight's bullshit, I was like okay that's a bad fight. Um, maybe if I just wait it out, they'll change it, and they did. So I, I'll probably go in there and beat it. But I you know I like Elden Ring. I think it's my favorite of the Fun Fun Soft games. But I don't know. There was something about Shadow of the Earth Tree that did not grab me the same way that that game did. I think a lot of the fights are still very good, but I don't know. Maybe it was just the idea of, like, I came back to it way later. And that new mechanic shit that they had on top of it was, like, we had to find new things. I don't know. I wasn't super feeling it because I felt like, okay, this just feels like a way for you to say, like, hey, this guy who you, you leveled up and waited for the DLC, we're going to specifically punish you? And I was like, oh, man, this kind of sucks. But... It's, it's whatever still a very good game though probably shouldn't have been nominated on here though i would have preferred maybe another game on there i'm on the camp of saying dlc should have its own nominee section and yeah in Bellatro, i can uh pay pay at any time it's like 15 bucks it's, it's not like it's not like a metaphor where, where it's like fucking 70 dollars or final fantasy rebirth which is 70 dollars i think on pc but if you find it on like a ps5 disc it's like 20 dollars um, and Wukong, which is, I don't know, is Wukong on Steam? It has to be on Steam. Let me check Wukong real quick. Steam. I typed in Steam into Steam like a fucking idiot. One moment. 
60 bucks. That's not bad. 42 and the 42nd annual Golden Gay Joystick Awards. Oh, please don't accidentally play the video. That's fine. Who was nominated? Upcoming games, the finals. Road to Midnight, I Am Cat, Tekken 8. That's right, Tekken 8 was this year. Uh, but yeah, I, I'll have to play a couple more for those games. I have to play through Dragon Quest HD, uh, like I said, which is my current go-through. And then I have to play a couple other games. And then by December time, I have a pretty good idea of what what my games of the year were for the year. I think I have a pretty solid list of it. It was a pretty good-ass year for games, I'm not going to lie. So I'm like not too like hurt with a lot of other than out of obviously shadow of the earth tree is that it was a very good year for games so it's like uh the specific game that i really like that's it's not on there i'm like yeah no shit it's there was a lot of good games <laughs> the problem when there's a lot of good games is that not all of them will get nominated for everything um Except for the best fighting. They need to get Sparking Zero and Multiverses off of this, because I Sparking Zero is barely a fighting game. And Multiverses already stole it from King of Fighters, so I don't want to see its ass win it again. Um it shouldn't, it shouldn't win it. Jeff Keighley forgot about it. Jeff Keighley forgot. He said this year Sp uh, Multiverses came out and everyone cheered. And then he shows the the Steven Universe Infinite that I know they patched out. I don't care. That's still the video everyone uses when they think of uh, multiverses. But yeah, they could have nominated some other stuff there. Sparking Zero is a very fun game, but it's more of a party game in my eyes. Because that game is the most fun when you're just like with a friend. And you're just like, yeah, let's do it. Goldo versus whoever. And you're going like double Goldo and you're having a good dumb time. Uh, which I guess to be fair, that's the same for fighting games. When you're doing like stupid stuff in a fighting game so what do i know but i definitely see it as like arena fighters are like the last priority to pick for the most part and yeah even in terms of arena fighters i feel like it could have been maybe a little bit less janky with some of the stuff there but it's weird because i like the jank that's the reason why i like it i don't really take it as like a serious thing <laughs> I'm not one of those people who are saying, hey man, let's get some buffs. Uh, not some buffs, let's get some nerfs in here, let's get some changes. I'm like, no. What? It's just the game. It's fine the way it is. It's like, no it's not. I want to play this game every single day and record competitive videos and it's not working for me. I'm like, I bet it's not. <laughs> it doesn't. I don't know why. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know why they put in a, a rank system. <laughs> This game doesn't feel... It's like it's like uh, the playing ranked in Pokemon TCG Pocket. It's like, really? You just ranked up to lose to Misty Coin Flipping seven times in a row? That's what you signed up for. It's like, and now you're bad because it's not good. I'm like, yeah, no shit, it's not good. <laughs> it was never designed with that in mind, in my, in my view, but whatever. It is in the game, though. So I guess if it's in the game, it's fair for criticism, and therefore it can be improved. And I've lost the argument of not really, um, ah, oh man. I've lost the argument of, like, I don't, I don't really believe in, I believe in if there's a, a breaking bugs, you should fix those. That's fine. But in terms of, like, changing, like, the mechanics of a video game, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not so sure about that. Like, even though I'm, I say, I said literally a couple while, a little while ago, yeah, oh yeah, they changed Elden Ring so that the boss is actually beatable, so now I'll play it. I don't know, there's something lost in the fact that that game launched with a shitty boss battle as the final, as the final, uh, battle. And now it's just kind of gone. It happened twice. It happened twice, is what my brother said. <laughs> they did that twice. Um. What was the other time? Is is it, are you talking about the, the 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 big beast dude at the end, or are you talking about Radon? You forgot that they had to patch Radon. No, I remember that they had to patch Radon, but I didn't hear that it was because it was a bad fight. It was just that it was a hard fight. The 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 new fight with uh, in the DLC is like legitimately there were like moves you could not dodge. Like, undodgeable moves, where originally Radon was just, like, really hard, but there was ways to beat him that didn't feel like it, like the actual... I don't know. 
I do know that they, they had. They did have to patch the Elden Beast. And I can't uh, deny that the uh, changes to Elden Beast were for the better. I just feel like, in my day, that was just considered a new version of the video game. <laughs> like, Persona 3 to Persona 3 FES. If you want to play original, mind-boggling Persona 3, it still exists. But if you had completely patched it all out of, out of it, I guess you end up with Remake, which is still a really good game. I don't know. Maybe I'm complaining for complaining's sake at that point. But I've always felt like, deep down, I'm like, uh, I feel like a lot of the times the patches people do is because they want them to continuously play their game. And I always feel like uh, there's a specific time, unless it's a multiplayer game. Multiplayer games can be played nonstop. That's the only conceit I'll give. Is that multiplayer games are a different experience because you're fighting different people every single time. And therefore, it has a different kind of experience to it. So I'll give you up on that one. But even then, I feel like um, there's a shelf life for a lot of games. And if you're done with a game and you reach the ending and it says the end in big letters, you're okay to put that down. And you don't have to worry about returning to it. Unless you just really like that game. Which is what I did as a kid where it's like, oh yeah, I would beat games... And then I would go back to them, and I would be perfectly fine with that entire experience. It's not like I was a kid and going like, they need to nerf Mauser in Super Mario Bros. 2. Because I feel like he's cheap in some of the things he does. It's like, no, I never really felt that way. And I still don't really feel that way for a lot of stuff. I think when it happens, I'm more like, okay, that's cool. That's fine with me. I guess the same is true about fighting game patches and nerfs as well. But I also did play Yu-Gi-Oh! as a kid, and when you play Yu-Gi-Oh!, there's a ban list. Like, there's changes to the ongoing meta. Like, they introduce new cards, but the thing about competitiveness is that if there's a surefire way to win, people will continuously exploit it if you allow them to. Because it's a competitive environment, and in their head they're going, whatever, man, this still is viable, I'm gonna fucking use it. Until they don't let me use it anymore. Or it's not the best thing anymore. And the best way to do that is just like, okay, it's banned. Congratulations. BLS is banned. Chaos Emperor is banned. And you go, okay. Fuck. And then Yu-Gi-Oh! did the shitty thing of changing Chaos Emperor Dragon's effect. They gave him a patch note. And everyone agrees that it was a terrible patch note. <laughs> they should have given just a new version of Chaos Emperor Dragon instead of changing the classic. The Cla Chaos Emperor was broken and beautiful in his design. New Chaos Emperor, there's no joy. It sparks no joy. What you see is a neuter dragon when you look at that card in the modern context. And that's what I don't want. Is that I feel like for some specific things, I like it to stay as is and to remember it as the beautiful mess that I played and loved. And yeah, it was janky and it wasn't perfect. But that's okay. I don't expect things to be perfect. A thing doesn't have to be perfect for it to be enjoyable or for you to even view it as perfect. It can just be the flaws inside of it can be just as much as the experience as anything else. Which sounds weird when you hear someone. This is where you start to say like, Wokey, you're on some weird hippie art bullshit at the moment. But I don't know. That's how I feel. That's how I feel about a lot of things. And I guess the one example, I, and it's funny because I guess some gotchas have just prepared me to be like, yeah, you should buff. And then I look back at Bunyan and I say, like, actually, they should change Bunyan. So maybe it's just specific things I'm okay with. And some other stuff, I'm just weird and begrudge and, and hold on to that stuff. Humans are anything, or if, I've, if there's anything I know about humans is, is that they're filled with contradictions. They say one thing and they want one thing, but then another thing contradicts that. And it's the contradictions that just make you human, I guess, for the most part. I don't think that the Yakuza Like a Dragon adaptation deserved to be put on Best Adaptation next to the Knuckles TV show. Exactly, it should have been the Knuckles TV show on its own. It should have just been Best Adaptation, the current nominees are Knuckles, and then nobody else. Even though I really liked Fallout. And I thought Fallout was cool. And Arcane looks really good. But I, I, I can't continue it because it's uh, about League for the most part. And that Like a Dragon Yakuza thing looked like a bummer. Um, 
I, it was a cow a bummer. I remember because a lot of the trailers were coming out, and we had a lot of people who were unfamiliar with Yakuza saying like, I don't know about this one, guys. He doesn't do like the silly funny sh shit. And it was like, shut up. It's not always about that. But as someone who enjoyed the seriousness of Yakuza, I started to notice that there were some changes in there in the tiny snippets that they showed that I said, first of all, if this is supposed to be Majima without the, the eye patch, he should not be so crazy gung-ho. That was my first warning shot when I said, I think this show might not be good. It was when I saw that in the trailer before it came out, before I went on vacation. I saw that, and then I was like, oh no. And then I had a friend who watched it, and then the slow reveal over time as he realized that, oh man, this thing is not good. This thing is not worth watching if you're a fan of Yakuza. So I don't think it deserves to be on, on there at all. I don't know anything about any of the other nominees. I just saw this off, in the, off the corner of my eye, so I had to say something. But Knuckles deserves to win on the pure... I know it's likely that Fallout wins, but Knuckles deserves to win for getting Wade over. People weren't sure how to feel about Wade. It wasn't until Knuckles came out and gave us the Flames of Disaster. Uh, Wade saying the Flames of Disaster was what finally got him over. And people are now pro Wade. Now people, now, now all the people who were anti Wade, they're asking, "Where's the Wade poster? Where's the Wade? <laughs> Is Wade even gonna be in the new Sonic 3? We don't know anymore. Maybe you guys treated Wade too hard. Maybe they took that criticism that they saw from the hardcore Sonic fans who said, "I'm tired of Wade. The, I didn't know that this was the Wade show, and now the, they took away Wade, and now you're going, wait a minute." Here's, where's Wade? Give me Wade. I love Wade. <laughs> I love you, Wade. <laughs> I love you, Wade. I love you, Wade. And now he's not here. Now we never know. What We have to wait for Knuckles Show TV show, Season 2, <laughs> where he'll get chili dogs and uh, delicious burgers with Wade once again in the new series. And he'll, chaotic. Yeah, Knuckles Chaotix. So we'll, he'll like, I got to say something to you, Wade. We're going to start the Chaotix Initiative. He's like, that's cool. I found an alligator. Woodle <laughs> is really into solving crime. <laughs> and that's how we get Vector the Crocodile into the show. With his bee friend, Charmy B. He's like, there's three of us. I don't see the other guy. He's like, I'm right here. Oh! And then, like, close up of Wade's face on the camera. <laughs> you know what? That would make sense for the Knuckles TV show. <laughs> It, it went, uh, we're, we're cooking some hardcore stuff here for the Knuckles TV show, season two. Get me on the line, Paramount. Me and my brother are ready for it. We are ready for Wade. We're ready for Wade. 100%. Um, and Fallout include more songs. That's all I have to say. Give, give more songs to uh, Fallout. Some more ink blots. Some more other stuff. That's cool. And then actually have Bethesda make a new game. <laughs> I know that they're still cooking on the Elden Rings trailer for Elden Elden Ring 6. <laughs> they showed off that uh, that trailer that showed a bunch of like environments and they said Elden Rings uh, not Elden uh, not Elden Ring. Elder Elder Scrolls 6 coming soon. So they're still working on Elden Elder, Elder Scrolls. But now people are all about Fallout. So now it's time to get skipped again. Release a new Skyrim. Bring a new Fallout. That's my decree. That's what I'm looking forward to in 2025. When Phil Spencer comes out on stage and says, We've heard you what you're saying. New Fallout game coming exclusively to the PS5. And then later to the Xbox. It's like, Phil, isn't this your company? And he looks at you with uh, those long dead eyes of his and he goes, yeah, it was. And then cut. And that's E3, everyone. And that's the end of this video, everyone. <laughs> it went on for about an hour. Uh, let, <laughs> let me know if there could be less. I still feel really bad about writing all this stuff and it's just me going off on a tangent there. But anyway... Best of luck to you guys in your cleaning up of Lottos. I'll see you guys in the next video. And happy grinding if you're out there doing grinding. Till next time, peace out.
Say goodbye, boy. Goodbye. Peace.